Good morning. Uh, this is P. Venkata Mahesh, Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Bihar. In this uh, discussion, we will uh, see the implementation of uh, outcome based education. Now, first, uh, before implementation, we should see this is the framework of OBE. So, what uh, uh, what is the framework you can see? We will take the inputs from industry and the professional organizations and based on that we will de design our uh, program specific outcomes, course outcomes, uh, uh, program educational outcomes, vision, mission, all those things we will uh, we'll define. So in sequence is like this, first we will have the institute will have vision and mission statements, then uh, the department will have vision and mission statements, then the department will have the program education outcomes and the NBA has given the program outcomes and the department will create a, I mean decide his own uh, program specific outcomes and uh, for each course uh, will decide some course outcomes and will map these things and with the POs and based on the course outcomes will design the planning and delivery of the teaching learning process and then after the course completion we will assess the outcomes, program outcomes, course outcomes uh, and then we will take the uh, we will take the feedback and improve upon these, these outcomes. So this is the basic outline of the uh, framework of the OB. We will see in detail. Now this uh, this picture gives you the implement the process in which the implementation of OBE takes place. So we use the Bloom's taxonomy and uh, we will define the course outcomes and we will map the program outcomes with the course outcomes and we will also map the course outcomes with the program specific outcomes. And then we will, uh, I mean, uh, for all the courses, so there are no, not one course, there is not one course, there are many courses in a program. So, for all the programs it is done, and then the implementation of the courses is done, and then the assessment of the course outcomes and program outcomes is done, and then again the group continues. So, the vision and what is vision and mission statement? So, if you see the statements help in defining aspirations and remain focused. So, these uh, vision and mission statements are supposed to give, uh, help us to remain focused in our goal. So, they should be written in a simple language, easy to communicate and should define objectives which present near and future of the institute. So, the vision and mission statements of institute, if you speak, then it is the uh, so vision statement is nothing but it is the dream of where one wants the institute to be and aspires all the stakeholders. So the vision is we have a uh, dream where the institute and the stakeholders, uh, when the where the institute is to be that uh, vision should be there and this vision inspires all the stakeholders and the mission statements is help this mission statement helps us to achieve that vision so actionable statements so this mission statement is uh, nothing but the actionable statements that guide the stakeholders to act to get the vision to uh, achieve that dream so how to formulate the vision mission statements so it is a bottom up approach. So what uh, we will do, we will involve the stakeholders and have a discussion with them and analyze the SWOT analysis and gap analysis and also analyze the challenges before the institute, how uh, the financial challenges or any other challenges and also analyze the immediate and long term goals. Based on this discussion, the vision and mission statements are evolved okay so the vision and mission statements of 
the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering or LEMS. This is an example for vision and mission statements. To bring forth professionally competent and socially sensible engineers capable of working across cultures meeting the global standards ethically. So they want uh, the uh, engineers to meet the global standards. So that is the vision. Now what is the mission then? To provide students with an extensive and exceptional education that prepares them to excel that prepares them to excel in their profession guided by dynamic intellectual community and be able to face the technical complex world with creative leadership qualities. So they want the students to develop leadership qualities and so that they will be able to face the technically complex world. So the other one is further to be instrumental in emanating new knowledge through innovative research that am um, ambulance uh, entrepreneurship economic development for the benefit of the widespread community so so they want uh, the research also uh, included in that so that uh, it will uh, enhance the knowledge further okay then the department also will have some vision and statements in accordance with the institute vision and mission statements. So these are the vision and mission statements of mechanical engineering department. The department of mechanical engineering envisions the value based education, research and development in the areas of manufacturing, computer aided engineering, education, research and development in the areas of manufacturing and computer aided engineering as an advanced center for mechanical engineering. Okay, so the department wants to be become an uh, advanced center for mechanical engineering. So, producing graduates of world class competence to face the challenges of global markets with confidence creating effective interface with various organizations. So, they want to create interface with various organizations and in that way they want to build the confidence in the students and competence to face the challenges. So then what is the mission? So the mission of the mechanical engineering department is to prepare effective and responsible engineers for global requirements for providing quality education and to improve pedagogical methods employed in delivering the academic programs to the needs of the industry and changing world by conducting basic and applied research to generate intellectual property. So, so mechanical engineering department wants to improve the pedagogical methods so that the students uh, will get the needs of the industry and the changing world so, and that way they will be able to generate intellectual property. Now after this vision and mission statements then uh, we have to uh, create the program educational objectives and these are the examples of program education objectives of mechanical engineering department. So to provide students with a sound foundation in mathematical, scientific and engineering fundamentals necessary to formulate, solve and analyze engineering problems. To prepare students for successful careers in industry that meets the needs of local Indian and multinational companies. To provide the ability among students to synthesize data and technical concepts for application to product design and prepare students to work as part of teams on multidisciplinary projects. To promote students awareness for lifelong learning and to introduce them to course of professional practice ethics and prepare them for higher studies. So these are the program education objectives of mechanical engineering department. Now the NBA has uh, taken the attributes the uh, from the accord Washington accord and they have
taken this object made this program outcomes and this program outcomes are common for all the institutions so engineering knowledge this is the first outcome apply the knowledge of mathematics science and engineering fundamentals and an engineering specialization to solution to the solution of complex engineering problems <coughs> problem analysis identify problem formulate review research literature and analyze complex engineering problems reaching sustainable sustained conclusions using first principles of math mathematics natural sciences and engineering sciences design and development of solutions design and design solutions for complex engineering problems and design system components or process that meet the specific needs with appropriate consideration for the public health and safety and the cultural societal and environmental conditions so next up outcome is like this the conduct investigations of complex problems use research based knowledge and research method methods including design of experiments analysis and implementation of data synthesis of the information to provide valid conclusions the fifth one is like this the modern tool usage create select and apply appropriate techniques resources and modern engineering and it tools in, including prediction and modeling to complex engineering activities with an understanding of the limitations sixth one is the engineer and society apply reasoning in informed by the contextual knowledge to assess societal health safety legal and cultural issues and the consequent responsibilities relevant to the professional engineering practice seventh one the environmental and sustainability understand the impact of the professional engineering solutions in the societal and environmental context and demonstrate the knowledge of and the need for sustainable development eighth one ethics apply ethical principles and commit to professional ethics and responsibilities and norms of the engineering practice individual and team work function effectively as an individual and as a member or leader in diverse teams and in multi multidisciplinary settings communication communicate effectively on complex engineering activities with the engineering community and with the society at large such as be able to comprehend and write effective reports and design documentation make effective presentations and view and receive clear instructions project management and finance demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the engineering and management principles and apply these to one's own work as a member and leader in a team to manage projects in a multidisciplinary environments the last one is lifelong learning recognize the need for and have a preparation and ability to engage in independent and lifelong learning in the broad broadest context of technological change now here in the first five pos we have seen something called complex engineering problem so what is this complex engineering problem so these are not the problems that we see at the end of the textbook chapters so these the uh, the problems at the end of the textbook chapters they often test if the context contents of the chapters have been understood or not but they are not the complex engineering problems then what are the complex engineering problems these are problems that have not been completely framed and leave at least a few choices for the students to make so the students have to make choices for these complex engineering problems problems may require use of physics or being or bring in some mathematical tools in which the problem can be framed so the complex engineering problems are not the textbook uh, uh, problems they are the real life uh, problems then 
this program specific outcomes the these are the program specific outcomes of mechanical engineering department focus on ideation and research towards digital manufacturing in product development using additive manufacturing computer numerical control simulation and high speed machining so the second one is formulate and evaluate concepts of thermo fluid systems to provide solutions for interdisciplinary engineering applications the third one is to make use of the computational and experimental tools for building career paths towards innovation startups employability and higher studies now the course each course will have some course objectives so far what we have seen is the program related things now each course will have some course objective and based on the syllabus will be decided and the outcomes will be framed now the course objectives the evolution of the major theories the cfd is a course which i am uh, talking about and in this the course objectives are like this the evolution of the major theories approaches methodologies and programming techniques in computational fluid dynamics the second one is the development of various fluid flow governing equations for the conservation laws from the conservation laws of motion and fluid mechanics the rigorous and comprehensive treatment of numerical methods in fluid flow and heat transfer problems in engineering applications the environment and usage of commercial cfd package packages and carry out research in interdisciplinary applications these are the course objectives and now each course have to be de designed i mean have, uh, for each course we have to design some course outcomes and the course outcomes should be like this the student it should have three parts the first part is the student should be able to what the student should be able to do and the second part is behavior and the third one is the resulting evidence so it have the action word and learning statement in your course outcomes so the action word identifies the performance to be demonstrated and the learning statement that specifies what learning will be demonstrated in the performance now an example if you see upon completion of this course students will be able to so this is this is the first part second part is knowledge concept rule or skill you expect to expect them to acquire so whether you want to expect them to, uh, whether you want to ex uh, whether you are expecting them to acquire a knowledge or concept or rule or skill by how will they apply the knowledge or skill or how will you assess the learning so the third part is how will they apply the knowledge or how will you assess the learning so these are the parts of the cos we will see some example of cos so this is the syllabus for the computational fluid dynamics the first module in having introduction to fluid dynamics uh, what are what is the history of cfd philosophy of cfd and how cf applications of cfd all these things we see in the first module and the second module what are the governing equations for the cfd the fluid flow and heat transfer problems what is the governing equations and we will see in that modules models of flow and we'll derive this substantial derivative and physical meaning of divergence and we'll derive the continuity momentum and energy equations and we finally acquire uh, the navier stokes equation and, and euler's equation the third module partial differential equations and its numerical behavior so the forms of governing equations suited for cfd so whether the conservation form is uh, is suitable or non conservation form is suitable that we will see by 
अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट शॉर्ट फिटिंग एंड शॉर्ट कैप्चरिंग मेथड्स एंड टाइम मार्चिंग एंड स्पेस मार्चिंग प्रॉब्लम मैथमेटिकल बिहेवियर ऑफ पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ पॉसि लीनियर पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस मेथड्स ऑफ डिटरमाइनिंग द क्लासिफिकेशन जनरल बिहेवियर ऑफ हाइपरबोलिक पैराबोलिक एंड एलिप्टिक इक्वेशन सो दैट इज द थर्ड मॉड्यूल द फोर्थ मॉड्यूल इज डिस्क्रिटाइजेशन एंड न्यूमेरिकल मेथड्स फॉर द पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस सो व्हाट आर द बेसिक एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ डिस्क्रिटाइजेशन दैट वी विल सी एंड we will see what are the transformation techniques for the grids and we will see what are the error how the error analysis and stability analysis is done and we will see the grid generation techniques in the fourth module in fifth module what we will see is we will see the explicit and implicit methods for finite difference equations and also we will understand how to use the finite volume method for solving one dimensional and two dimensional problems so this is the syllabus and for this we have to define the course outcomes so the course outcomes as we have already said after the course the students will be able to will be able to that is that is the first part so this is the action verb summarize summarize the concepts of fluid computational fluid dynamics and its applications in various industries to use it as a tool for fluid and heat flow analysis so the summarize it is a understand once they understand the concepts of fluid the cfd and its applications they will be able to use it for heat flow and fluid flow analysis the second course outcome the students should be able to select the appropriate fundamental physical principles and a suit, suitable fluid model to derive the governing equations of cfd analysis for cfd analysis so students should be able to select appropriate model for deriving the governing equations of cfd so the third uh, co is explain the importance of conservation form of governing equations in cfd by recalling the shock fitting and shock capturing methods so they should recall the shock fitting and shock capturing methods and they should be able to, based on that they should be able to explain the importance of conservation form of governing equations in cfd analysis the next one is classify the partial differential equations into hyperbolic parabolic and elliptic forms so the cfd governing equations have number of partial differential equations and by finding the mathematical behavior of these partial differential equations they should be able to classify them into hyperbolic parabolic and elliptic equations so next one is make use of various discretization grid generation transformation techniques of finite difference method for analyzing complex fluid flow problems so here they they will learn uh, so many things about discretization grid generation transformation techniques of grid are uh, related to the finite difference method and using this knowledge they should be able to use this knowledge for analyzing the complex fluid flow problems the last one is apply the concepts of finite volume method for analyzing basic fluid flow problems so basic fluid flow problems in the sense one dimensional and two dimensional that we will see in this topic so these are the cos and in the next lecture we will see the mapping of cos how the cos and the pos should be mapped how to make the articulation matrix all those things we will see in the next